Alright, we're going to go ahead and cover some troubleshooting real quick. So, um, got a few different tools in here that we can use to, to do some uh, troubleshooting once we have the network up and running. Now that is once we have the network up and running. So let me cover one of the things that's actually, in general, what's going to prevent your network from being up and running. And that is the ability for your tunnels to communicate. So this is completely driven off of the uh, MTU of the VLANs that are connected. The easiest way to evaluate this is to go ahead and set up a VM or uh, a physical host, however you want to do it, between this VLAN, if we, if we have this on your physical un, uh, underlay as VLAN 100 and this one is VLAN 200, put a node on 100, VLAN on 200, and then go ahead and ping with the correct size over. So if you do a ping tack S with minimum of 1500, uh, then you should be able to hit the other side without it fragmenting and have them communicate. If you do not have this set, then you're going to end up with all kinds of very interesting, bizarre issues that you will not be able to figure out. So uh, that's, that is the first and foremost, I have seen this more often than any other issue during startup is making sure that you have a proper MTU set between these two. So what does that look like? Well, if you were inside of your east-west traffic after you set up your segments, so we go in, we look at our segments, we have these two segments right here that are trying to communicate with each other, and you try to ping back and forth between each other, they don't work, uh, you can't get anything, you know, very large on the screen. Uh, actually, you would be able to ping, you wouldn't be able to ping at the size of 1500. So, you wouldn't be able to do some of the things that you would expect to be able to do. Now, your systems that reside on these segments would still work. They'd still turn on. They'd still do some light communication. One of the things I noticed is that if you go to certain websites, if you're connected to the internet, some sites will render, others will not. So, the sites that will render uh, generally are able to downgrade and you know kind of do that hey what MTU can you communicate at kind of query it and and be able to get things up slowly but surely uh, over to your your endpoint here and the ones that will not are you know they believe that they should be able to go through the pipe and trust the network uh, and not communicate with your your endpoint so what ends up happening is the way you can troubleshoot it go to your VM that's on that segment so we're on this Ubuntu box it's running on that class B1 segment that class B1 segment is running that as its default gateway so this is the interface for that segment segment if you were to go in here edit it change the identity change your MTU down to 1400 and then be able to have everything render and communication actually works that means that it's an issue with the MTU between your tunnels so that's the the number one easiest one to spot is oh, I've got an MTU issue so if you were to have an MTU issue okay you know you gotta gotta figure that out gotta gotta get it cleared up on your underlay Make sure that it's cleared up inside of your software-defined switch or VDS. Make sure this guy has been configured with a jumbo frame. So if you've got it plumbed all the way through, you should be fine. Also, of course, like I said, you can test it and prove it by having a large size ping between these two. Now, if you were setting up uh, any of these pieces and let's see for example going into I want to say this transport node profile uh, no, that is not it go into the uplink profile you were able to manually set the MTU here default value is 1600 so and it says that that's not applicable for the VDS. It's going to go ahead and follow whatever's on the VDS. 
but you can manually set it to 1600. You can manually set, you know, your um, any of your uplink to uh, uh, 1600 is generally default. You can set it higher. You can set it uh, lower, but lower is going to make it so that any VMs you put inside of this environment, you're going to have to down downgrade those. Um, so setting it higher, fine. You're just going to be able to move more data. So that is number one most common issue. So then another fun issue that, uh, that I've seen is that sometimes security is applied to your segments. So you could end up with segments, uh, these class B1, class B2, they're on an active tier one. That tier one is connected over to a tier zero. Uh, these were moved off of the test segment, the uh, test tier one gateway. So the this test segment, if I were to connect a VM to it, it would not get anywhere. There is a security setting somewhere inside of here that is preventing that. So creating a new tier one, making sure that if you know you look through, you can see if there's any tags or anything like that might be in your distributed firewall. Might have uh, you know an SSH uh, uh, rule set where you're blocking SSH from everybody. You're dropping any SSH traffic. If that was turned on, and you have to turn it on and publish it. So if that was turned on, all of a sudden you can't SSH, and you're like, wait, what's going on? Go ahead and check your rules and determine whether or not you set anything up, up over there. So we're going to go ahead and move away from that without saving. Um, so another fun thing here is trace flow. You need to figure out why you're not going to be able to communicate from point A to point B. You've already gone ahead and taken a quick look over at your uh, firewall rule sets. Can't figure it out. Can't identify what's going wrong. Uh, everything is plumbed. You're able to ping out from a box, but you can't connect on some other other method so we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at that Ubuntu 03 we'll go ahead yeah let's do a TCP source port 22 destination port 22 we'll go ahead and do a layer 3 reach out to another box that I know is on the network and we can go ahead and trace it out so there we go this will tell you every single piece that it hit so we went ahead and we went from we injected the traffic where it was received, where it was forwarded, and then eventually that was delivered. All right, that's cool. Let's go ahead and publish this rule. Let's see what happens if we retrace. There we go. Drop by the firewall rule. So that's an easy way to find any underlying uh, rules that might have occurred. You know, something that's missed, a ghost in the machine that, uh, you know, hey, this is this is actually still here. So uh, some of this stuff, uh, I hate to say it, but because the system is so new, uh, I, I just brought up a ghost in the machine Sometimes when the uh, enterprise groups are patching their systems, they may uh, cover some menu options or make it so you can't identify or see menu options. And you may have to query the system through an API, but you would be able to identify, you know, if you, if you saw this firewall ID, rule ID, you would be able to see the identifier and you would be able to use a tool to work with the API in NSX to get rid of that rule, to uh, turn it off, uh, 
disable, re-enable, so you can go ahead and do your troubleshooting. Now let's go ahead and turn that off. I might want to SSH into that box later. All right, so uh, some of the other things that I've seen is when you are changing around anything you know in particular on your system, uh, you're going to start seeing tunnels dropped, you know, red, you'll start to see red flags. These guys, it says not available. Now, the reason why this says not available, it's nothing to be concerned about. There are no VMs running on ESXi Master or ESXi Node 01 that need to use a tunnel. So we don't have anything connected to an NSX segment running on these two hosts. If we had anything running on one of these two hosts, then it would all of a sudden pop up the tunnel and then as you can see we only have between node 2 and node 3 we do not have master or node 1 so if we had VMs running on master or node 1 you'd see a new tunnel would be populated from edge 0 1 it would have a tunnel to edge 2, edge 3 node 1, 2, and 3, and master if we had VMs running across all of the different uh, uh, hosts in the cluster. So inside of here, another fun thing is, can you get out? Well, you know, if you've got your segment connected to a tier 1 for east-west traffic, your tier ones are connected over to a tier tier zero and your tier zero has an interface connecting it out to the internet why would it not be able to talk outside so uh, we are using BGP to communicate our routes so we have an asynchronous system number so it identifies routes, any of the routes that are advertised uh, from the tier 1 gateways up to tier 0 we can choose to advertise those and then any of the routes that tier 0 has learned we can advertise those as well. Once we're able to identify any of the routes we can go ahead and set up BGP neighboring with the physical or other virtual tier 0 or physical routers. When we go ahead and we set that up what we end up with is communication between the remote async, uh, autonomous system there it is sitting at its its uh, interface that we're connected to through our, our external interface and we can see the routes so we can see the routes well but do we know how to get out is it advertising the route out and that's where you may need to add a static route so I added a static route to get completely out of the network and the next hop is actually the default gateway to get outside of, of uh, outside to the internet from this lab so uh, this allows VMs that are connected to get all the way to the internet and as we can see here this guy is connected to the internet we can ping Google we're good to go If there are issues uh, getting outside of of you know your your tier one, uh, that can be a gateway security issue. Uh, if there's issue getting out of your tier zero, it could be a routing issue. Uh, so our topology here, we have our segments that are connected to you know VMs are connected to the segment. The segment goes to a tier one gateway. And that tier 1 gateway has a slash 31 address to get to the tier 0. So our tier 0 is our north-south. This is how we get out. This is how things get in. This is ingress, egress. This is where it is. Tier 1 is east-west traffic. So we also have a front half and back half here. So we do have the tier 0 distributed portion of that router. The distributed portion of that router is what communicates down to the service portion of tier 1. Our service portion of our tier 0 is what communicates out to the rest of the world. So we have really where it says a tier 0, we have two routers there. We've got a service router and a distributed router. 
That distributed router communicates to the Tier 1's service routers. And then the Tier 1 distributed router resides on the hosts. So that's where it's able to do its hairpinning if it knows that it has a VM that's on a different segment but still connected to that Tier 1 router. It's able to hairpin it inside of the host. So, uh, in general, if you're having some type of an issue getting out, you will see that there is a failure from your VM that's on an internal segment at this point. And that's where you need to start troubleshooting what your route looks like outside of here. Uh, that also can occur uh, if you do if you have a mismatched MTU. So uh, MTU being the most important thing to troubleshoot, that is that is your your uh, first place to look is uh, MTU. If all the other segments are operating fine, it's not MTU. It's something else. Maybe security. It could be routing. It could be you know somebody may have uh, gone inside of here, set a static route. To something completely different. So inside of here we can go ahead and take a look at uh, one of the other fun places to fat finger stuff. So we've got our NSX uplink and you can see that we VLAN trunked that, right? So I just went ahead and trunked it. Why did I trunk it? Well because when I was building this out I went ahead and I, I set up uh, inside of our transport zones, or pardon me, our profile for our transport, uh, went ahead and set this up so that it's VLAN tagged here. Now I could tag this as zero, and if I were to tag this as zero, then I could go ahead and go right back here and change this VLAN to six. If I keep it at zero, tag four, 4094, that means that it's uplink, that uplinking outside of my hosts uh, that they can go ahead and go to any VLAN that we tag inside of here. Now, I believe that there is a method to uh, give multiple transport VLAN tags and put that in multiple, you know, upload teamings. So you can go ahead and have uplink 1 is connected to transport VLAN 6, and then uplink 2 is up to a different transport VLAN. Uh, it's a little advanced and in general not required for setup. But, uh, you know, setting it here, not a big deal. That way you can kind of have a, a quick, easy reminder. Hey, what VLAN am I on? So that when you're setting up your IP pools and when you're able to identify on your nodes, hey, what IP address should this be gathering? And you get that 10106. So... I was able to identify, hey, things look good here, things look good there, um, but that is a place where you can fat finger. Uh, inside of our edge transport nodes, again, you, you have this IP pool. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure, because these guys are, are tiny. I mean, you can put these in a, what, slash 28, slash 30 uh, subnet, and you'll go ahead and where these uplink over to... I want to say we have that as VLAN 21. So this is already tagged at the VLAN level. And so that really it was just dropping it where it needed for its VLAN. Um, pretty easy way to tell whether or not you did that correctly is when you go to your edge transport node. If the status is down, that means that it can't communicate across its own VLAN, which means you may not have VLAN tagged it correctly. So, uh, easy enough to identify some of those problems, but these are some very, very common setup problems. Uh, we will probably make another video about additional setup problems as they come at us to uh, get over some of the common issues. All right.